Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how to take pictures of the Milky Way. Uh, some of my subscribers have asked me to, to shoot a video that was more specific about just taking the pictures. I have some videos about how to do time lapse of the Milky Way, but uh, that goes into some additional details that they'd rather just be able to focus in on just the photos portion, so uh, I'll cover that now. Uh, really the first most important part is finding a location that's dark enough that you can see the Milky Way. Uh, when you get near metropolitan areas, cities and such, you get a lot of light pollution that obscures the sky. So if you can see the Milky Way with the naked eye, even, very, even if just very faintly, then you'll be able to take pictures of it and they'll turn out pretty good. Um, so as far as equipment, really you just need a tripod and your camera. You can use a kit lens, and that's generally like an 18 to 50 millimeter f 3.5 lens. Um, if you have anything that's wider than that, so less than 50 millimeters or 18 millimeters, and something that's a little faster, so like an f stuff of maybe 2.8, uh, you'll get a little bit better results. But I shouldn't be discouraged with the kit lens. You should get just fine. Um, here's a few images I took with a kit lens before, so you can see that. You, you'll be able to get some good shots. Now, uh, another key to getting some good shots of the Milky Way is when you frame up the image is to have something in the foreground, so like trees or a building or something like that. And uh, you can light it so that it uh, shows up a little bit brighter. Um, and just a simple flashlight would work. I've used mag lights and just from a distance you kind of change the brightness of the foreground object by moving the flashlight closer or further away from the object, uh, from your foreground. Um, I found that worked pretty well. Um, so as far as the settings go, you need to set the camera on uh, manual mode. You want your, your F number, stop number, to be the lowest possible number. I'll show you that here in just a second. So like I said, if it's a kit lens, it's at 3.5. If you um, and then your shutter speed has to be 30 seconds. Your ISO you want at 1600 or 3200. Some of the newer cameras do very well at 12,800. Uh, you can do that too. Set your ISO to 12,800. And then if you do that, you can back down your shutter speed to 20 seconds. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Um, and then when you, for your lens, you want to make sure that your focus is set on manual and you're going to have to set to infinity. So I will show you that here in a minute also. Uh, so I'll give you, so now I'll do close-ups of the camera and show you what the settings look like on the camera and, um, and on the lens. All right, looking, this is a Nikon D300. Uh, though multiple, the cameras are going to have different looks to them. This, I, the number format is going to be the same, so you'll be able to see. So, and this is manual mode, there's an M right there. If I change that, um, you'll see that there's A, S, P, and back to manual. So, I'll show you what the dial looks like on a lot of the other cameras um, for reference. This number right here is the shutter speed, and this is the f-stop number. So, we want to set this to 30 seconds, so on this camera. So, now we're getting down to 1. And then we get the double hash marks on the top, the quotation marks, that's seconds. So now we want to set that to 30. So I'm at 30 seconds. And the f-stop, this number right here, I'm going to set as low as possible. So in this case, it's 2.8. Now I'm pretty much ready to take a picture. Um, I'm going to set the ISO. In this camera, it's at 1600, but I'm going to set to 3200. All right, so those are the settings. Now we'll change the settings on the lens. On most cameras nowadays, they have a switch on the side. That's the easiest way to switch it from manual to automatic. So actually, so in this particular case, that's automatic. You want to switch it to manual. Here's the focus ring, and you can see this number up here. And you see the infinity sign? So I'm going to set that to infinity. Now, if you focus a little past infinity, um, you can focus out a little further out. This is setting to the hyperfocal distance. Another way to do it, some cameras don't have this at all. What you can do, especially in the daylight, is you focus the camera at an object that's maybe 
300 feet away or so, you know, a good distance away. And then you can tape it, That's, which isn't a bad idea um, even when you're taking pictures at night is to tape your, your focus ring. That way you don't accidentally jar it while you're moving the camera around. Um, the other thing, let me make sure that I'm at the 14 millimeter as opposed to 24 millimeter. So when you're, if you're using the kit lens, you want to make sure you set your camera to uh, 18 millimeters. Just for reference, here's a camera that has a dial uh, selector instead of on the Nikon D300. So this is fairly common even with the with the Canons. You just might have a different system here. But all of them say M. The Canons have instead of A, it'll be uh, um, AV, and then instead of S, it's a TV. But they have P and M, just like Nikons do. So you set it to M mode, which is manual, and then you'll see on your um, display on the right here, there's the 125 is the shutter speed of f5.6 is the f-stop, so we can change that down as low as it goes. On this particular lens is 3.3, and then we'll change the shutter speed down to 30 seconds. If you go past 30 seconds, you hit bulb mode, which also works, but we'll go with 30 seconds, and then you set your ISO to 1600 or 3200. And that's pretty much all you need to do. So you have your camera set. Again, you're setting your f-stop at the lowest possible f-stop number. That would be 2.8, 3.5. You're setting your shutter speed at 30 seconds. Your ISO speed is at uh, either 1600 or 3200. Uh, and, and like I said before, it could be as high as 12,800. Um, and then you'd back your shutter speed down to 20 seconds instead of 30 seconds. Um, make sure you set your lens to infinite focus, you're on manual focus, and then the other, su the last suggestion I have is when you shoot, um, you want to make sure your straps are kind of secured, and then, because if they're blowing around in the wind, it'll shake the camera, which might mean you get a blurry image. Additionally, instead of just pressing the button, the shutter button, what you might want to do is set it on like a timer mode where you know like a 10 second timer use a shutter or use a shutter release cable or use a remote um, the reason I suggest that is because when you hit the button you could potentially shake the camera and it'll give you a blurry image or slightly blur the image you're gonna get the sharpest image if you don't touch the camera while it's while it's taking a picture or to trigger the photo so um, I hope this helps if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Any constructive criticism is appreciated. If you want to see any links uh, to the time-lapse videos, how to shoot time-lapse of the Milky Way, I'll be showing them and have them on the, on the video in just a few moments after the credit. And they'll also be down in the description below. Um, you can follow me on Twitter if you like. Uh, eventually I'm going to start a Facebook page called Captured Photons. And uh, uh, thanks for your time. I, if you have any questions for anything car or camera related, leave them down in the comments and I'll try to get to them. Thank you. Bye.